Ellie and today we're going to take you through a couple of exercises to prep for you for next week when we're going to do the Easter come. Um, we're just going to start with a little warm up so yeah, pick it up. Yeah, all right. So just make sure you've got a nice space around you, no obstacles, nothing you're going to bump anything on. Um, yeah, make sure you can't hit anything. <laughs> we're just going to start moving through the ankles. So I'm going to push down into the floor, like toe to heel. So I'm really trying to work all of my foot down into the floor. Nice. And then we're going to take it into some shoulder rolls backwards. I've just got a little bit of a bend through my knees. Squeezing those shoulders up past your ears and pushing down. Change direction, so forward. Nice. And then we're going to take that into elbows. So I'm going to do my elbows forward. So thinking about just touching the shoulders, rolling those elbows forward. Still got that nice little bend in the knees. And change direction. Backwards elbows. Lovely. And then we're going to do full arm circles. So I'm going to push my shoulders all the way back past my ears. Super, super straight arms. Biggest rotation you can do. Lovely. And then taking that forward, stretching those fingers out as well, and then bonus points if you can do one forwards and one backwards, and then little one forwards and one backwards. Nice. So we're going to bring it into our next. I'm going to think about taking ear to shoulder, just pushing the other hand down away. To increase that stretch on that side. And the other way. I'm going to do one more each side, ear to shoulder. And the other way, ear to shoulder. Looking up to the ceiling, opening the chest, pushing the arms back slightly, and then down to the floor, rounding the shoulders, pushing up and opening, down and closing. Back to the middle, and keeping the shoulder still, looking over the right shoulder and the left shoulder. And again, right and left, and then taking it into a little semicircle. So I'm going into shoulder, around the bottom, to the other shoulder, and back. A couple more times, and back, and bring it back to centre. We're going to try and do our rib cage next. It's a little bit trickier, so I'm going to try and keep my hips still and slide my rib cage to the right and left hand side. So you're trying to just move from this bit. This can be a little bit tricky, you can't figure out what's going on. Sometimes it helps to look at yourself in a mirror so you can see what's happening because it feels a bit weird. And then we're going to try and push forward and back. So that one's usually a little bit easier. So pushing the chest forward and back. And then so you can do all fours. I'm going to go side, front, side, back. And then if you can, smoothing that out into a full chest circle. And then the other direction, so side, front, side, back. Aiming to smooth that movement out into a circle. Lovely. Bring it down to the hips. So we're going to do a nice big hip circle. And change direction. Big as you can. And then going for figure of eight movement. So trying to draw that number eight with your hips. And the direction. Figure of eight the other way, which always feels a little weird for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> tricky. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to take that into the whole leg. So I'm going to do my the figure of eight movement with my knee. So I'm thinking about trying to balance and rotate that hip. So I'm internally and then externally rotating that hip. Nice. And give it a little shake. And same on the other leg. So drawing that figure of eight movement from the knee. Good. Awesome. So we're going to take it through a couple more stretches and warm up movements kind of down on the floor. So if you've got yoga mat or something you can use or just any kind of soft floor that you've got underneath you. Not essential, but if you've got something that'll help your knees. So I'm going to stretch up towards the ceiling and try and think about opening my chest a little bit. And then we're going to tuck chin down, roll down through each vertebrae in your spine, reaching towards the floor. I'm going to put my hands on my ankles and my shins wherever I can reach and then I'm going to bend and straighten through the legs. 
couple times, bend and straighten. If you can reach the floor, well done. If you can, you can just stay on the chins. Nice, and stepping back into a downward dog. And again, we're gonna bend and straighten. So I'm trying to hover, so my knees are just off the floor. And then as I push back, straightening the legs, I'm really pushing the heels down to the floor. Nice, two more. And then from our downward dog position, I'm going to kick my legs straight up behind me for five, four, three, two, and one. And same with the other leg, trying to keep that heel down on the one that's not kicking. Straight leg, point to toe on the kicking leg. Nice, and bring it down on the knees. We're going to pop the hands on the floor and just go for a little circle. So I'm just starting to put a bit of weight through the wrists on each angle and then change direction. Push your back in the way. Cool. And then just gently popping down into the floor on the backs of the hands. Like this. And give it a little roll and we'll shake off. Awesome. So we're going to come forward into our tabletop position again. I'm going to think about trying to arch my back so I'm bending, bending back onto the floor as much as I can, lifting the chin forward and up my like space, lengthening out the those vertebrae, and then tucking chin to chest, squeezing the belly button in towards my spine as much as I can, rounding that back, and then opening again. So we're going to go through these two positions a couple more times. Trying to find your maximum movement each way. And then add a couple of circles for good luck. And change direction. That's cool. All right. And one more little thing here. So I'm going to come out into my plank position. I'm going to bring one leg forward into a nice long lunge shape. So super straight back leg, placing the hands down and just dropping the hips. I'm going to place one hand on the side and I'm going to straighten the front leg, flex my foot and you can keep the back leg bent in that position. As I come forward, bend the front leg, toe down and straighten the back leg. So, moving forward and backwards a couple of times. And then hands in front, swap legs, plank, other leg, one hand either side, straighten. And then that front leg. Nice, a couple more. And bring it back into your plank position. We're going to jump the feet in towards the hands. I'm going to roll it back up to standing. So, pushing the heels down, starting by straightening the legs, and then soften the knees and roll up from the bottom of the spine through the middle, shoulders, head, and relax. Awesome. So you should be feeling a little bit warmer now, hopefully, a little bit more mobilised. Um, and we're going to go straight into some little bit of conditioning um, to get us feeling strong. Yes, I need to come back to that. So we're going to do eight different exercises to target your upper body, abs and legs. 45 seconds on, 15 second break. Uh, and don't worry if some things are seem a, very, a bit too hard and you can do them to a little time we'll figure out ways to we'll make you, it. We'll give you easier options and harder options. Exactly. Depending on how it's going. Okay. So, the first thing that we're going to do is push-ups. We're just going to go with it and explain as we go. So, yeah. Just follow along as best as you can. Um, 45 minutes, 45 minutes, 45 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Push-ups. It's starting right now with push-ups. One, two, three, go. So I'm thinking about starting this nice plank position. Hands and shoulders, bending the elbows, keeping them nice and close to your body, dropping your nose to the floor just in front of your hands and pushing back up. Keeping that tummy tucked in the whole time so you're not arching your back and keeping that core engaged. When these get a little bit too hard, when you've done as many as you can do, bring it down to the knees. Again, we try and do elbows in, bring your chest to the floor, and pushing back up again. 
Try not to do it in this position with your bum backwards, because that's cheating. <laughs> Three, two, two, one, rest. Awesome, rest time. Well done. What's our next exercise? Our rope bolts. So this are going like this. You're in mm -hmm. this shape. Then you want to go tuck and back out. And tuck and back out. And go. Up we can. <laughs> so those are a bit too hard. You can make them easier by putting your hands in the back. So you're still doing the up workout, but you're just assisting yourself a little bit and you can decide how much push you want to give yourself up. If they're too easy, you can turn them into V-sits. So arms over head and arms straight and legs reaching for the toes in the middle. Ooh, remember to think about keeping your pelvis tucked under so you're engaging those abs with whatever version you're doing and not letting any stress go into the lower back. Three, two, one, rest. And rest. Right. Next one's our squats. Just pretty self explanatory. I think we've done quite a few in the new circus already. But just a couple of things. Uh, feet hip width apart. And just make sure that your knees, that you're going to a 90 degree angle. And back up. So you're not bringing your knees forward, bringing your bum back. Three, cool. two, one, go. Yeah. Try and keep the chest lifted, sit in the bum back, actively squeezing the glutes on the way back up again. And try not to just drop down and then go back up. Make sure that the full movement is controlled. It's just a little bit nicer on your joints. And it makes you work on your way down the same ones and you wake up. If those are too easy, add a little jump. Really hard. Just, just don't go as low. Yeah, I think it's too hard. Just go to your maximum that you can do. We're almost there. Three, two, one. We go. Rest. Rest. Mountain climbers are nice. Mountain climbers. So this goes to my plank position again. Strong tummies, straight line. Bring um, knee in and back out to plank. In case you're doing like a little run, give a go, John. Just Three, in. two, one. Yeah. So you can run them. See if you can get our movement happening nice and fast. We should get a little bit out of breath as well. Yes, I'm going to stop being able to talk one day. Make sure that you're not in a downward dog kind of position. Or oh, fluffy tummy. Yeah, or oh, fluffy tummy. To make it easier, you can just walk it. So I'm just going a bit slower and not really jumping the legs. I'm placing two heels down. If you really want to challenge you, just yourself just go as fast as you can. You can try and actually touch your elbow with your knee. So you go about. <laughs> or opposite elbow to knee. So it forces you to really crunch. Three, there. two, one, rest. Oh, yes. That was hard. It's good. We haven't been in the position about six months. Yeah, it's been six months of <laughs> resting. That's the next one. Next one's this up and down elbows. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so back into a plank. Yes. And you're just gonna go down. The other one up. Three, up. two, one, go. Up. So you try and alternate hands. So I'll go down left and up left, and then I'll go down right and up right. I'm trying not to let anything wiggle to the side as much as you can. Again, not dropping, not pushing up. I'm not in. The only thing that I can think about making this a little bit easier. Do it on your knees. Do it on your knees. Or um, finding something to elevate yourself a little bit so that you're not have all the weight on your hands if you're in a little different angle. Mm -hmm. Like a couch or something like that. But for the moment. Three, two, one, rest. And rest. Ha! Huh. How many have you got left? We have calf races, then bicycle crunches, and then lunch walking. Okay, three minutes left, guys. Yes. Yeah, some calf races. Yeah. Oh, nice and easy. Three, two, one. So these are probably easier off a mat because it's easier to balance on a hard floor. Doing single leg calf raises. So engaging the tummy so you've got that balance going on as well, so it's a little bit trickier. 
pushing up as high as you can and say, look, give us a half time on this one, Johnny, so you can swap legs. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Ooh, don't fall over like that. <laughs> Good. And you're trying to really stabilize yeah. the ankle. Swap legs. <laughs> a wonderful time. Half time on four to five seconds. <laughs> yeah, you know, what's that like? <laughs> Something and a half. Yeah. It really helps for your ankle strength. And your cuff strip, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and, and balance. <laughs> and balance. You can find a chair to hold on to yeah. after a roll, isn't it? And that will make it a bit easier. Done. Okay. And rest. Okay, and that was a bit of a you know low impact one, a little bit for rest. This one, uh, bicycle abs. Yeah. A little bit harder. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Three, two, one. Okay. And you wanna cross? One elbow to one knee, make sure that both, that you're not just like going up with your half body or you know, just going up with your knee. You want both of them to meet in the middle and really twist the torso. It's not a sit up, it's a bit of rotation. So, really trying to access those obliques, the ache, the twisting movement. If that's too hard, take it down, press the leg over, and just think elbow to knee, kind of taking the legs out of it. Don't forget to swap legs, elbow to knee. If those are too easy, well, you're really strong. <laughs> Not well do it faster, do more. <laughs> Three, two, one. Awesome. So we've just got one exercise left, is that right? Yeah, almost there. Lunge walking. Um, yeah. So um, in your lunge position, we're aiming for um, about two 90 degree angles, and we're going to go for a walk. So I'm going to step. Go. Squat leg each time, here we go. Step and swap. Get as low as you can, so dropping that back knee as low down as you can. Take as many steps as you can in your space and then going the other way. Just making sure that you're dropping, so it's swapping legs each time. On the next round, see if you can go backwards. I'm going to step back, drop, together, back, drop, together. If you're in a small space, you can just do like two forwards and then two backwards. Swapping legs each time. Two, one, rest. Oh, well done. Oh, nice. Just have a moment to take a little breath. Let's just roll the shoulders back. Think a couple of nice deep breaths. And feel your body return to normal. Yeah, normalish. Yeah, let's keep that kind of energy of warmth going through the body. Uh, and we're going to continue with some handstands. Yeah, so just yeah. warm up a little your wrists, just a little bit. Again, these are going to be easier on a hard floor. So if you're doing it on a squishy mat, um, it can like push your wrist back a little bit, so hard floor is a bit better. Yes. Um, we are gonna, so I'm just gonna move some things around a bit. <laughs> We're gonna start out. Um, we know that not all of you have somebody to spot you or are in small spaces, so we're gonna do a couple of exercises that you can just do on your own and then maybe something that you can do with a wall or with a spotter. We're gonna start by doing some, uh, what's this position called? Upside down? Down and down. Down and down. down, down. <laughs> we just set this tent. You've been tied up in the glasses. Exactly. So it's <laughs> tent. And we're just gonna do the same kicks that we were doing at the beginning of the class, but we're just gonna do a little bit of a jump. A little hop. Kicking up as high as you can, but we're not trying to get both legs up into a handstand yet. We're just trying to get that push off the floor um, to get a bit more confident in lifting our legs up. Just to warm up nice. your wrists and just to feel the transfer onto your hands. We're gonna do both legs. Do the other one. Landing as softly as you can on the way down. So you're kind of controlling that movement on the way down as well as the way up. Yes. Nice. Cool. Over the, <laughs> the next exercise is going to be uh, a bit of a kick up. So step further away. You're going to start with your feet together, hands up, big lunge, 
and then kind of go into that same position that you were before, but use the momentum to get yourself into an L-shaped handstand. Running like this. And coming back. Lovely. So you're just trying to get that L-shape. We're not trying to bring both legs up together. Um, you're just trying to get that one leg stacked nice and high over the shoulders. Don't worry about the other leg left, uh, other leg yet. Try and find a little bit of balance and then come back and go. Exactly. If you can stay up there for a second just to see how that feels, then do that. If you don't feel too comfortable just going all the way up, then just go as high as you can. And swap legs. <laughs> yeah. Try both sides. And yeah, just have a couple of goes with that. Yes. And now we're going to practice again a little bit of just going up into a handstand. Our tuck, straddle, and pike. Some of them can be a bit too hard to just do on your own, but just have a go at how those position feels. The first one is again uh, with your feet a little further away from your hands, or as close as you feel comfortable. I'm just going to do like a bunny hop. To try to get your hips over your hands in a back position. Like so. So it doesn't matter how high you go, I find these quite hard. <laughs> the higher you can get your hips, you gotta just take them up as high as you can, try and land softly. The more you do them, they will get better. So we're gonna just do about 10 of them, 10 tries. And then we'll tie 10 straddles. And ten pipes. So same idea with the straddle, but we're just gonna open the legs out to the side. Yes. And with the pipes, uh, the same kind of position, just straight legs, hips over the head. These are hard ones. Yeah, these are hard. But, you know, take it as you can. If you have somebody to spot you, or you're a bit confident in going into a handstand, by all means, do. Um, but if not, just practice as much as you can. Just make sure that your hips are going on top of your hands. Yes. Um, we're just gonna, if you have any time, uh, any time, if you have any energy there, uh, one of the things that you can also try is just to hold up handstand uh, against the wall with a spotter. Um, yeah, let me just spot you. Yes, sure. So if you've got a wall, you can use that. I'm going to move out of the wall. So again, big lunge. And then she can just try and hold it for as long as she can. And I'm just going to gently support. And then she can come down and she's ready. Yeah. So have a go. See if you can do one handstand up against a wall if you have one. And you can try one with kicking up with each leg. Hold it for a few seconds, come down. And then we're going to take a little water break. Yes. So grab a drink of water, have a little rest for a minute. And we'll come back in with some more tricks to teach you. had a nice break. Now this next bit of the session is going to be some juggling, some shapes on the floor and some headstands and some poi. And we're going to start with some juggling. This uh, juggling session is going to be a little bit different than your normal juggling session. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of foot juggling or an intro to how one may touch a ball of the foot. Probably a different colour ball than myself. <laughs> but, but yes. So, when we're talking about foot juggling, the first thing that you want to do is just warm up your feet a little bit, even if it's only just to wake up your toes, and to take your socks off. Things with socks, foot juggling with socks is a little bit harder than you would expect. So just give your feet a little rub, you know, just warm up your feet and warm up your toes. Give that a little wake up. And then we're gonna Point your toes at the front and then just flex your toes. 
but not your, the rest of your foot. So it's like that. Then you flex, and then go up to flex, and then just point as your toes. So you're doing like a little claw, and then point the rest of your foot. I'm gonna do that a little faster. Just to mobilize your foot a little bit, to get the blood rushing to it. Should I need to do it? Yeah. <laughs> You can practice this to make it really flowy, but you know, this is just a warm up. Give your feet a little shake. And there's a lot more things that you can do to mobilize your feet further, but for the purpose of this session, we're just gonna leave it at that. There is a home edition foot juggling where I go a little bit more into detail about what things you can do to your feet to mobilize them and help them prepare for foot juggling. But for now, that's fine. Cool, so we're gonna start just by placing a ball on your foot and flexing just your toes. So the same thing that we're doing, just flexing your toes. And just see if you can take the ball off the ground and just balance there. Just gonna try to move it forward to the side. Just move it around. Try to move it a little bit faster. Try to balance it. Nice. Yeah, if you drop it, that's perfectly fine. It's just to get used to the feel of a juggling ball being on your foot, which is an odd thing in itself. So, you know, you want to just make sure you do a little bit of a exercise. Like walking around can also be a good one. Just walking a little bit around around the space. Nice. Cool. If you're struggling with that, keep going with that. Take your time. If that's like a bit too easy, just going to go ahead and play something else. And the next thing to do is to learn how to, how to kick up a ball from your foot. For that, it's going to look something like this. What you're doing there is that you're in a quick motion, you're taking your heel to your bum and then kind of twisting your foot a little bit to the side, like that. So the ball kind of goes through the side of your body and then back. So then just practice like this. Nice. Just do it a couple of times. And again, very important that you keep your toes arched to the side. Nice. Now for the challenging bit is how to catch a ball on your foot. Is to do a foot catch. For this, you're gonna throw the ball to your foot, like this, and catch it as it comes down. And the way to do this throw is to just kind of like, as you swing your hands aside, you bring your leg up with the ball and then just let go of it. Don't try to throw it too far up. Just let go of it gently and then bring your foot down at the same speed as the ball. Let's try that a couple of times. All right. That handy. Yeah, it's, it's, it kind of goes from really easy to really hard very quickly, but just have a go. Again, keep your feet flat. Having something to hold on can be a bit easier. Yeah, that's how you catch a ball on your foot. And of course, once you get used to just catching it, I did it. And back up. Nice! <laughs> class legs. Yeah. <laughs> There's many different things that you can do with that in juggling patterns and uh, other positions that you can catch up on your foot, like on your point like this and others. Uh, but for now, we're just going to leave it at that. Of course, practice everything on your other foot. <laughs> um, and yeah, just have a go. It takes a little bit of patience, but keep practicing. That's it. So the next thing we are going to try is some headstand practice and a nice little twiddly leg thing in your headstand. Um, so we already warmed our necks up quite a lot, but just make sure that your neck and your shoulders are feeling mobilized and warm and you've kind of done every sort of direction you can think of um, so your, ne your neck isn't suddenly surprised when we try and put weight on it. And it feels nice. And ready for action. Uh, you do want to try these, having something soft is going to make it more comfortable, like if you've got a cushion or something that you can top under your head, 
And doing it against a wall or against a sofa, so you can't fall over backwards. Against a sofa is great because you can still kind of balance, but if you go too far, you just sort of end up on the nice squishy sofa. Yeah. So there's two ways to put your hands, and I think we go different ways. We do I find it that. really hard to do it with the hands. Um, so yeah, there's two ways you can do it. Yeah. The way that I prefer to do it, for a headstand that looks like this, is with my hands and my head kind of creating a triangle on the floor to kind of mark out where I want my hands. What I do is that I put my hands like this, put them on the floor, kind of mark where I want my hands, and then where my hands naturally meet at the top, that's where you want your head. So what you do is you just put one hand where your elbows used to be, and then you put your head where your hands used to be. And then slowly walk your feet. Yes. And I like to do it just a little triangle. So it's like the same technique, but I just have my elbows on the floor and my hands. So I'm creating a triangle between my elbows and my hands on my head. And um, sort of how I'll measure it out. Same thing. So just walk up your hips as high as you can. And then just test your balance, you can just bring one knee up and just see if you can start to lift that other one off the floor. And try and find that balance point. So you're really stacking yourself, shoulders, hips, um, and you just find that little bit of balance in the middle where you're not hiking too much, but also you're not pulling it back. Keep your tummy engaged, keep everything very yeah. engaged strong. and strong. Yeah. So practice these, and um, you can try a couple more fancy shapes when you're getting the hang of it. So obviously keep practicing that basic kind of just trying to find the balance of the head standard until you feel a bit stronger. Um, but we're going to try straddle shape. So your straddle position on the floor is just this nice wide leg position. Um, so as I go up in my headstand, I'm going to think about taking my leg wide and lifting them up. And back down. So nice wide legs, trying to get kind of horizontal mm -hmm. um, to the floor. So you can have a get that. Nice. And um, so what we're just going to throw in slightly more fancy option um, towards the end. This is a little bit trickier. We're going to try a little leg twiddle. So um, I'll show you the foot on the floor. So you can just wrap it on the floor because it's a bit confusing. We're going to start with our legs straight together. I'm going to internally rotate and think about bringing my toes away from each other but keeping my knees together. So that's our first position. Our second position is bringing the toes together but the knees away. So you're externally rotating this kind of diamond shape. And then our last position is our straddle. So we go straddle, diamond, knees, straight. Knees, diamond, strap. And then we can speed that up till it's flawless, truly movement. Like so. When you have a hang up, you can try it in your headstand. So coming up into the top, and we're going to go knees, diamond, straddle, and maybe back up. Beautiful, nice. And you can do it nice and slowly to start with and you can speed it up as you get more confident in those positions. Huh. Awesome. Good luck with your head stamps. Keep practicing. Yeah. We've got one more um, section to do some tricks with you. We're going to try some poi tricks. So for this, you want to have a couple of, well, even if you've got poi, or you can make yourself stop poi by putting almost anything in the end of the pair of socks just so you've got a bit of weight in the end. Um, we're going to start with two poi and just trying to do a forwards movement. So if this is too hard, always just take it back to one hand. Do one hand and then the other hand. And anything I tell you to do in the next five minutes, just take it back to one hand if it feels too hard. With two hands, I'm going to try and do both hands together, spinning the poi forwards. And I like to think that I'm standing in like train tracks. So if my train tracks are facing straight towards the camera, I'm going to try and keep the poi travelling 
in those train tracks. I've got this nice straight line either side of my body. If they start going inwards, they'll hit at the front. If they start going like in the back, they start hitting yourself. So yeah, you're aiming, you can do all sorts of different angles eventually, but we're aiming for nice straight lines to start with. So if my train tracks are going along the mats this way, have those nice straight lines. Forwards, once you master that, try and go backwards. And keep doing these ones until they feel super easy. And then your next option is going for split time. So this is same time, so both poi are travelling forwards. I can add a little bit of a bend in my knee, this is kind of like down, up, down, up movement that like helps it keep it nice and regular. And then for your split time, I'm doing one and then the other, okay? So here they're both travelling round together. On my split time I go one, two, one, two, one, two. And you can think about your hands, whereas before we were doing this down up at the same time. Now we're going like right, left, right, left, right, left. And you can do that backwards. Nice, and if you're really clever, you can do it in opposite directions. Excellent. Should we sign on? So I'm going to start by reaching one forward, one back, and then do opposite directions. It can be a little bit confusing. Like, you can probably tell from my expression. <laughs> hey, yeah, there you go, nice. Cool. So keep practicing that, keep practicing those variations I just showed you. If you want to make it one step harder again, um, we'll try some little changes of directions as we go along. So I'm going to start going forwards with both poi. I'm going to go for split time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just keep spinning my left hand as if nothing has ever changed and that's just going to stay the same forever. And then my right hand is going to change direction, okay? So multitasking. So my right hand, I'm going to sweep it to the back and change direction. And now I'm doing one forwards and one backwards. <laughs> so keep practicing that. <laughs> and then if you're still with me, they're going to change the left hand. Oh, I'm going to get confused now. So left. No, that was, well, almost. And then try and do the right again. So I'm better with the right hand, this is my favorite hand. Left. Mm, I'm going to install my left hand. But that's what you can find it. So, Change of direction. Think about that kind of stool happening as you do it. So you're stretching and bring it back in. And then try with the left. Oh my god. <laughs> I need to practice that one clearly. Can be again. Can be another tricky <laughs> one. Practice makes perfect, makes perfect. Like most things are guessing. Keep doing it until it works every time. How are we doing for time? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but let's uh, leave it there with the point and we're going to, I oh, know we're going to do one more trick. Johnny's waving at me frantically, so we're going to do one more trick. <laughs> do this one. Do this <laughs> one. I'm taking requests now. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what that means. We're going to try this one. <laughs> um, so this one is like, it's like uh, a weave if you've done that before. Um, but it's over the head. You don't have to do it on the weave, but it'll, yeah, it'll help you too if you've done that. I did do a home, uh, home whatever it's called. Home edition. <laughs> home edition <laughs> video. <laughs> I did a home edition video about your 2 weave, so you can go and practice that if you don't know it yet. Um, so I'm going to go for a little spin over my head like a helicopter and then bring it out in front of me and do like a circle in front of my body. I'm going to have to lean forward a little bit so I can fit that in um, so I'm not just hitting myself with the point. You can try varying between that, so spin above the head, spin in front, you don't hit yourself in the head. I was just about to say, before I change my mind and hit myself, if you do feel like the point's too long, um, you can just hold it a bit closer down so you've got a slightly shorter circle and then it will just be a little bit easier to manoeuvre. Um, when you're doing it every time, you've got this kind of figure of eight movement going over the head, under the arm, over the head, under the arm. And if you've got the hang of that with both hands, uh, then you can try feeding them both together so they just chase each other. Over the head, under the hand, uh, under the arm, yeah. Over the head, under the arm. So they're just following each other. Like so. Oh, awesome. And keep practicing, it feels really easy. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, um, our last little section, 
we're going to bring you back down for a nice stretch to get our muscles feeling long and ready for all the wonderful exercises we're going to do next week. So, <laughs> let's bring it down to the floor. Um, and I'm going to open my legs out into that solid position we had earlier. I'm going to think about walking, kind of shuffle the bum forward until you're as wide as feels comfortable. And I'm just going to sit up nice and tall. If you find it hard to sit up in this position, then pop your arms behind you and try and use that to help like just push to get that nice upright shape. If this is easy, then you can just hold it without your hands. And let's try and work through the hips a little bit more. So I'm just going to think about tucking my pelvis under and then pushing out uh, behind me. So uh, rolling forwards and backwards through my hips. That's just going to help loosen it up a little bit. And then I'm going to walk the hands forward, trying to maintain this nice flat back as we go. So I'm thinking about leading with my belly button rather than leading with my nose and that's sort of rounding my back. I'm going to try and flatten my back and sink that belly button forward. Try not to drop your elbows because that's lazy. So try and reach your hands forward. Stay up on your fingertips and like stretch your chin forward into the horizon and take it as low as you can. Also, keep trying, keep thinking about your knees going behind you a little bit, just in, they want to keep pulling in, just rotate them upwards so they're looking up to the ceiling. Nice. We do the same thing, we're switching over towards one leg. Again, maintaining that nice flat back. Thinking about the other leg still sitting into the floor and that knee pointing up and over to the other side. Nice. All right. And bringing it lying down on our backs. We're going to bring it into a glute stretch. So I'm going to lay down and I'm going to cross one ankle over my knee and I'm going to reach through my legs and pull that knee towards my face, just relaxing the head onto the floor. So I'm thinking about pulling the ankle closer to myself whilst drawing the knee away. So I should be creating a stretching feeling on that, this bent leg. Nice. And just holding there for a couple more breaths. And then we're going to swap legs. So cross the other leg over. And again, just pulling that in towards the chest while so I'm thinking about letting that leg drop away out of sight. All right, and um, we're going to bring it into the shoulders. So uh, this is really nice to open the shoulders because a lot of the stuff we do really closes the shoulders. Um, so I'm going to be in my knee position. I'm going to reach forward and allow my hips to come up slightly. I'm going to try and stay on my fingertips and keep looking forward. And I'm going to drop my chest down to the floor. Um, and then I'm going to think about squeezing my belly button into my side. So rather than letting my back really arch, I'm going to tuck it in a little bit and really focus on getting the armpits down and keep looking forward. And just take it as far as you can. Nothing should feel like super painful when you're stretching. You should just feel that, feel that tension and breathe into it. Nice, and bring that back. We're just going to do a roll back, uh, roll it up to standing. So I'm going to tuck my toes under, place my hands on the floor, straighten the legs, and slowly roll it back up, soft knees. Oh, my God. Awesome. So, well done, guys. Thanks very much for joining us today. Yeah. And we look forward to seeing you soon back in class next week. Easter Bye. <laughs>